Hey, trucked up guys and gals. Well, we are at a milestone with my F-150 Lightning, so I thought I'd share a couple things with you. We've reached the 10,000 mile mark. Actually, we're over it. We're looking at about 18,000 kilometers, and I thought we'd just do a little Hey, how's it going with this darn thing? What are some of the great things about it that I've noticed in my ownership experience in that time? And what are the things to look out for with it? Do I plan on keeping it? What's my thought on EV trucks overall? I'm not a fanboy type in that I'm not going to ever speak dishonestly or my against my feelings about my experiences with EV trucks. If I don't think they're measuring up as you've seen in previous videos, um, I let them have it. Uh, we got a long way to go with EV trucks, but we are also getting somewhere with EV trucks. And my experience with owning one now since October has been largely positive. There were some concerns. I mean, I'm replacing uh, internal combustion trucks that have been for my business uh, with a vehicle that was for my applications untested. So I was like, will this thing measure up? Will this thing be able to do what I needed it to do? In this 10,000 plus miles, it's done everything that I wanted it to do and more. Very few complaints with it. It's been incredibly reliable. It's been very stable. I have uh, not missed gas in the least. I've never got myself in a challenging situation where I was concerned and I've never had any kind of breakdown. You see all these horror stories, like especially recently with what's going on with, you know, Cybertruck just breaking down and all kinds of failures happening and red screening and stuff. I've not had any kind of issue at all. I think Ford was careful before launching this and trying to get things right. So they may, they may have gone a little conservative with a lot of things. I think they have. I'm hoping that they'll uh, move forward with their T3 on that, but for the most part, this fits a great utility truck application, a great around town truck application, but there's some things that are really important that you know after 10,000 miles, if I didn't have these things, I wouldn't buy the truck again. I wouldn't get one. And here's the thing. If you don't have the ability to put in a level two charger where you live, I don't think an electric truck's the right move. I mean, I just, I realize how privileged I am on this front. I am, I, I live in a, on an acreage. I have access to level two charging at my house. We have the ability to actually create power at our house if we wish to do so, you know, for free. I could literally charge vehicles for free up at the property if, if we wish to go that route. So that's a lot of privilege. There's a lot of people who don't have access to that. If you live in a condo or a townhouse or you're in an urban center where you, you have to park in the street, there's no ability to get your vehicle close to, enough to the house to be able to install a level two charger. That would really be a setback. You know, people talk about the costs of charging and most people admit that those charges are less than gasoline, but they're not as much below gasoline as home charging. So I, I want to make that point and clarify and, and recognize people who have that concern. I have that, so I'm very pleased. I wake up and I have a full truck. I go home, I plug in, I forget about it. I, I love just not having to worry about fuel. We've had power outages right through the winter. It's not been a problem. Not once have I had an issue. I mean, if we went for maybe a 10 day power outage, could be a problem. But some of the chargers here seem to, uh, in, in two of the urban centers nearby, if I had to, if push came to shove, I could probably charge up at those public charging stations that have backup power for the chargers. You know, either solar or a generator system, or they've got backup uh, storage batteries that back up the actual charging units. But anyway, I digress. Any, you know, great things that, you know, that, that I wish the truck could do that it doesn't do. Well, I was really worried about not having an extended range battery. Here in Canada, you couldn't get an extended range battery and get any of the EV incentives. Kind of sucks. It's a really stupid system the way it's set up, but okay, they're, they're just trying to limit the dollar amount they're gonna pay out, but that just means more trucks stay on the road because they're not willing to bend. Um, dumb, uh, but that's because most of these things are designed by bureaucrats, not by people who drive vehicles that are EVs. But again, I digress. Um, I couldn't get an extended range. That was a concern for me. Now, after 10,000 miles, it's not. I, I'm not worried about it at all. I never am. I do do road trips. I do go on long trips. Chargers are everywhere. Sometimes they're kind of shitty. They're pretty slow. But overall, I don't have to worry about it. So I don't miss not having the extended range. Kind of a surprise. 
because that was the biggest thing was always about how far they'll go, how much they'll do. Well, I can totally appreciate for a lot of truck owners, that's a big worry if they're doing fifth wheels, if they're, you know, they got a gooseneck or they're, they're hauling gear then uh, they're going great distances. And I still have my order, by the way, in for my Silverado uh, EV RST. It's an expensive truck and they just, you know, power played their way to range by just stuffing it full of batteries but the efficiencies are already going up so they're figuring out other things in that truck before they launch it they're they're working on it so i'm keeping that order open but the whole reason for having it of needing that range now isn't as much of a concern after having this truck for the time that i've had it so there's that i wish ford would have reached out when they deleted out the um the weigh scales in the bed so this is something that Ford did. They offered they had way scales. They really promoted it as this cool thing with the F-150 Lightning, and then they deleted it. Something to do with the chip shortage or COVID or, you know, they just couldn't make it happen, so they deleted it out, and they deleted that amount uh, from your purchase price. I wish sometimes that Ford would just stop being a legacy automaker and try to be more progressive by reaching out, by doing things that maybe are a little unexpected. So that's, that's a setback. I think that speaks more to the dealership structure where there's this firewall between Ford or the legacy automaker in general, the automaker in general, um, and the person who buys that automobile. It needs to be more of a direct community connection. I really think that's important for Ford uh, with this truck. Uh, it's very difficult to report problems. It's got this feedback thing that goes in through a quagmire of menus. It's stupid okay so feedback to Ford who the hell knows who actually gets the feedback anyway I've never had a response I have sent feedback out through the truck I've heard nothing I have no idea whether it was ever received so that's how good that system is what would have been nice where I'm going with this is why not reach out to every single Ford Lightning owner and do what you did like with the adapter uh, for Tesla superchargers kind of the same thing here uh, reach out hey maybe we can get you that weigh scale added to your truck for so much money we'll we'll provide the part if you cover the labor you know some kind of olive branch for something that for me even though it's a tiny little thing and it's like a oh yeah mr privileged problem um, it kind of is but look i'm using my bed all the time with loads of sod and manure and mulch and you know and i don't want to overshoot the, the capacity of the truck, because I want my truck to be healthy and last for years and years and years. So the way scales would be very, very useful. I'd like to see uh, better uh, user interface changes, little tiny things that'll drive you nuts. They did solve the battery issue that was ticking me off. I went in to do a tire rotation and they fixed it. They uh, had a little voluntary recall thing with a little module. They replaced it. I haven't had a problem since. So that was really nice. So that problem is fixed. Problems that haven't been fixed. Um, well, the frunk, the frunk will drive you nuts. Um, Pro power on board will drive you nuts. And they're kind of connected. So let's say I get out of the, the, the truck and I lock it. I go do some shopping. I come back and my hands are all full of crap. When I walk up to the truck with my fob in my pocket, the truck will unlock. The truck will present and I can just get in it. But if I do that with the frunk, no, for security reasons, this is keeping it locked so no one can break in. But I got the fob in my pocket and it just unlocked the whole freaking truck. Why not unlock the frunk? The frunk remains locked. You got to pull out the fob or go into the truck and press the button or you're just not going to be able to access it. Now, you're on a job site. You're using pro power on board. You got the frunk open. You got all your tools. You got everything right there for you to work on your job site. You got your little computer thing set up with your schematics or whatever you're doing with your job on your little iPad stuck in your frunk and that's plugged in. Woohoo! You got a little office. You got your whole workstation in your frunk. And then you go to leave. Frunk won't close. It's just timed out. Just shut down. It's done. You got to start your truck or fiddle with the fob and have it beep and give you alarm things and after like the fourth or fifth try you might get it to work dumb just stupid little niggly things like this pro power on board will just arbitrarily turn off just turns off so you're using pro power on board but it's decided that you've been away from your vehicle too long so eh, just turns it off what the heck's with that well i found out later it's in the menu 
that you've got to go in and say, oh, no, 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 no. Keep the vehicle on forever. Okay, so, so don't automatically turn the vehicle off because the vehicle has to be on and your key fobs have to be in the vehicle for you to use pro power on board or it starts turning crap off without your permission. I mean, that's kind of a security risk. I'm on a job site and I'm leaving my keys in and my truck on. It's just dumb in how it's all laid out. So this can be very frustrating as you're probably picking up. So overall, like from a negative perspective, yeah, on and off buttons that aren't needed aligning all of the different systems to work in an integrated manner. I mean, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto seem to be at war. They fight a little bit with the truck. So when you first turn it on, for the first minute or two, things are a little laggy. So when you first turn your truck on, some things that you'll have on will suddenly get turned off or Android Auto will override it automatically without permission. So there's a lot of this like little war things that are going on. You'll be in one screen and suddenly that screen will vanish and you'll be inside another screen. There's integration issues that Ford still hasn't worked out. Over the air updates have been infrequent. There's not been a lot of them, but there's been enough and I've noticed the differences. I'd like to see more. I'd like to see more improvements with these little niggly things. But overall, those are niggly things. They're like issues for somebody who wants to be nitpicky. You know, there's not a lot of negatives. There's a lot of positives. So am I happy with it? I, I don't think I would want to ever go back to, an, a, to a non-electric truck. And I would be willing to if I needed to. But I think the choices are soon coming that if I do get into a situation with the work that I do that would require me to look at something with longer towing and hauling range with both the trailer options that are coming down the pipe, got a video on that right here, with the range things that are happening with batteries, video on that right here, that is moving me to a place where I could probably stick with an electric truck and not have the range, uh, range anxiety issues, both for towing and hauling long distances within a few years at most. So by the time I make a choice on this vehicle, I should be in a position to be able to stay electric and still do all of those things. That's how fast things are moving. So fingers crossed that that continues to develop. Um, I wanna have more options in a year or two from now. Um, so we'll see where we go. Uh, am I gonna hang on to this for 10,000 more miles? Absolutely. So rather than me being in the studio, I wanna get out and do some stuff with this truck this summer. I've got all kinds of things lined up that I'm really excited about. Should be fun, should be goofy. They're not gonna be like your range test, tow test things. You've seen tons of those. There's loads of channels that are doing that. We're gonna go out and just have some darn fun with some really crazy people. And I like crazy people, I don't know why. And I wanna hear about goofy crap that you'd like to see done with this truck. And I'm also kind of open to the idea of some mods. Don't know if I can afford them. Sponsors, hello sponsors. And uh, see what we can do with an electric truck and how much trouble we can get ourselves into. I'm so excited that I'll have you along for the next 10,000 miles, that we'll be able to go out and do this stuff together. Please like, subscribe, bell notification for any upcoming videos. I wanna make sure you're in the loop. I really feel a community is developing here, uh, especially in the comments. Please comment, let me know what you're thinking. Always want the feedback. And then we'll see where we're at. We'll see what's coming along next. Stay tuned, talk to you soon.